Hello, everyone. My name is Yu Qian, a PhD student from the University of Oxford. In this video, I will present our work about detecting electromagnetic interference attacks on sensor systems. This is a work that I co-authored with my supervisor, Professor Kasper Osmussen. Firstly, let's have a look at what a sensor system is. A sensor is an interface between the physical world and an electronic circuit. It is a device that can convert physical quantities such as sound and temperature into electrical signals. For example, in our smartphones, a microphone is a sensor that collects audio signals such as voice commands. Sensors can also be found in critical applications such as automobiles and nuclear plants. For example, a lighter sensor helps the automobile to see the surroundings, and a temperature sensor can monitor the temperature of a cooling system of a nuclear reactor. In a sensor system, the sensor sends an analog signal to a microcontroller. The microcontroller then uses an analog to digital converter, or ADC, to digitize the analog signal. So the microcontroller can further process it. You may wonder, what about digital sensors? Actually, all sensors are analog in nature. A digital sensor includes such an analog sensor and an ADC, so its output is digital. Sensors are highly integrated into our lives, and hence, it is essential to be concerned with the security and the correctness of sensor measurements. Without any authentication scheme, the microcontroller has no choice but to trust the sensor measurement. The wire that connects the sensor to the microcontroller is an unintentional antenna, which is sensitive to electromagnetic interference, or EMI. An attacker can use EMI to remotely inject an attacking signal into the sensor system and change the sensor output. If the microcontroller includes incorrect measurements in its control decisions, it could have disastrous consequences. For example, if the attacker manipulates the temperature sensor output of a cooling system of a nuclear reactor, the cooling system may not properly adjust the temperature of the nuclear reactor. This is a very dangerous case. Nowadays, we have different ways of attenuating attacking signal, such as shielding and filtering, but they cannot eliminate the attacking signal. Therefore, it is essential for the system to have the capability of detecting attacks. The basic idea of detecting attacks is like this. When the sensor is off, the microcontroller should not receive any sensor measurement. However, if an attack happens, the microcontroller will receive a measurement. And this indicates an attack. So, if we randomly turn the sensor on and off, the attacker is forced to guess the state of the sensor. In order to bypass the detection, the attacker must not affect the sensor output when the sensor is off. If the attacker unluckily makes a wrong guess, she will be detected soon. Now, let's have a look at more details of our approach. Turning the sensor on means that the sensor is biased at a high voltage, for example, VCC. When the sensor is on, the sensor outputs a signal that carries the information of the physical quantity. Turning off means that the sensor is biased at zero volt. Then the sensor output becomes zero volt too. In our approach, we assume that the physical quantity to be measured is constant in one measurement period. For example, have a look at the figure on your right hand side. The room temperature, it changes very slowly in a long period, say one hour. However, if we look at the very short period, say 0.01 second, we can regard the room temperature as constant. The 0.01 second is a measurement period. In addition, for simplification, we assume that there is no noise. Now, have a look at the diagram on your left-hand side. 
we input a bias voltage signal that toggles between VCC and zero volt into the sensor, since the physical quantity is constant in a measurement period. The sense output has the same pattern as the bias voltage signal. I would like to draw your attention to the voltage levels of the sense output. Because the physical quantity is constant, we can observe that the high voltage level of the sense output is constant. Meanwhile, the low voltage level is also constant. As discussed before, we want to randomly turn the sensor on and off. Now we need to make the bias voltage signal randomized. As shown in the block diagram, we use the bias voltage generator to encode an n-bit secret sequence into a Manchester encoded code. The Manchester encoded code toggles between a high voltage level and a zero volt at the midpoint of each clock cycle. For example, a digit zero can mean that the voltage transitions from VCC to zero volt. A digit one can mean that the voltage transitions from zero volt to VCC. Since there are n bits in the secret sequence, the matrix encoded code has n clock cycles in total, and so does the sense output. Next, the ADC digitizes the sense output in each clock cycle into two samples. One sample is obtained when the sensor is biased at the high voltage, and it has a non-zero value. We call the sample that is supposed to be non-zero volt as the non-zero sample. The other sample is obtained when the sensor is off, and hence it has a value of zero volt. We call the sample that is supposed to be zero volt as the zero sample. When no attack happens, the digitized sensor output satisfies two requirements. Firstly, all non-zero samples are equal. Secondly, all zero samples are zero. If an attacker violates any one of these two requirements, she will be detected immediately. Before showing an example of an attack, let's first have a look at what the attacker can do. We suppose that the attacker cannot access the sensor system physically, but she can remotely inject a crafted signal into the sensor system. Also, we assume that the attacker has no information about the n-bit secret sequence, and thus she does not know whether the voltage level of the sensor output transitions from high to low or the other way around. Moreover, the attacker knows when the sensor starts and stops transmitting the sense output, and hence she can align the crafted signal with the sense output precisely. To avoid violating those two requirements, the attacker must change all non-zero samples to the same voltage level. Meanwhile, the attacker cannot touch any zero sample, but she has to make a guess in each clock cycle. When an attack happens, for example, in the first, second, and the fourth clock cycle, the attacker makes correct guesses, and she changes the sensor output when the sensor is on. However, in the third clock cycle, the attacker makes a wrong guess and changes the signal when the sensor is off. After digitization, we can find non-zero samples are unequal, and this implies an attack. Also, in the third clock cycle, the attack changes the zero sample, but all zero samples should be zero. And thus, the attack is detected. So this is how our approach detects attack. We can find that in each clock cycle, the probability of a correct guess is 50%, as there are only two voltage transitions directions in each clock cycle. Given n clock cycles, the probability of correct guess is 1 over 2 to the power of n, which is negligible. In other words, the probability of dodging the detection is negligible. Up to now, we introduced our approach regarding constant physical quantities in a measurement period. However, there are physical quantities such as sounds that oscillate rapidly, and these are non-constant physical quantities. In order to deploy our detection approach, 
we have to increase the sampling rate of the ADC until the physical quantity can be regarded as constant in a short period. For example, the signal on your left hand side, if the sampling rate is fast enough, we can have a short measurement period and thus it can be treated as a constant signal. Then the approach for a constant physical quantity applies. Unfortunately, in some cases, the sampling rate is bounded and the physical quantity must be treated as non-constant. For a non-constant physical quantity, unequal non-zero samples do not indicate an attack anymore. If the detection method only counts on checking zero samples, an attacker could choose to influence a single sample and succeed with a probability of 50%. Even though the signal varies so fast that we cannot make it constant by increasing the sampling rate, we can still use a model of the signal to detect the outliers. For example, if we know the bandwidth of the signal, we can recognize the sample that causes a spike beyond the bandwidth as an outlier. If the attacker wants to bypass the detection that is based on the model, the only way is modifying many non-zero samples, say k. But this would increase the difficulty to 1 over 2 to the power of k. This enables us to make attacks arbitrarily hard, even for non-constant signals, as long as the sensor signal is not random. Now we know how our approach detects attacks. Here, let's have a look at the practical implementations of our detection method. In this presentation, we choose the temperature sensor system as an example. We use the thermistor to build a temperature sensor system. The thermistor is a resistor that varies its resistance according to temperature. The output voltage of such a circuit is a function of temperature. This experimental setup is for our attack experiments, and it is placed in a lab with a constant temperature at around 25 degrees. Let's first consider the case that no detection method is deployed. We first fix the device voltage of the temperature sensor at a high voltage, and then we radiate an attacking signal. The result is shown in this figure. The x-axis is the power of the attacking signal, and the y-axis is the temperature read by the microcontroller. You can say that the attacker can manipulate the temperature by changing the power of the attacking signal. Then we deploy our detection method. In all of these figures, the x-axis is time and the y-axis is temperature. Note that the range of the temperature is between a reference temperature and 50 degree. The reference temperature corresponds to the off state of the sensor. In the first graph, there is no attacking signal. So you can find all zero samples are at the reference temperature. The mean of the non-zero sample is 25.5 degree, which is the true room temperature. In the second graph, the attacking signal, which is shown in red, is radiated continuously in each clock cycle. We can find that the non-zero samples are equal. However, the zero samples are non-zero and this indicates an attack. You may find that such an attack is a simple attack as the attacker radiates the attacking signal all the time. As for a smart attacker, she will guess the voltage transition direction in each clock cycle. In the third graph, for example, except for the third clock cycle, the attacker's guesses in the other three clock cycles are correct. However, the attacker makes a wrong guess and radiates the attacking signal during the second half cycle of the third clock cycle. The sample in this half cycle should be a zero sample. However, it is lifted to a non-zero value. Thus, an attack is detected. All of these graphs in the implementation are just examples. The real sampling period may consist of more samples maybe 128 or 256. In conclusion, 
we propose a novel method to detect the EMI attacks for sensor systems that match our model. In our detection method, a sensor system turns off the sensor to monitor the attacking signal in the sensor output. Regarding the security of the sensor system, we proved that our detection method can be bypassed with a negligible probability. The security of the sensor system is based on that the secret sequence is unknown to the attacker. In practice, our implementations show that our detection method is effective and robust in detecting the attacking signal. So this is the end of my presentation. Thank you.